and let's keep this moving. I'm going to welcome us uh, on behalf of DIIT. Uh, my name's Laura Ogando, Program Manager for the Office of Digital Literacy and Inclusion. So excited to be here with you folks again for another fabulous Friday PD. Uh, I'm going to say hi on behalf of Lisa. Lisa is not going to be joining us. She had a few conflicts today, but she'll be back next week. No worries. Um, and I believe Christina's also joining, but she's running late as well. Again, we're, we're pulled in a bunch of different directions, but don't worry, the team really is here, I promise. Um, and you already know, my girl Latique was on the back end of things, so she's posted all the links you need in the chat. We'll do that a few times uh, as folks continue to come in, but the gang's here and we're ready to support you today. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to my girl Derry, who's gonna go over some really important things happening with FACE. Hi everyone and welcome to Friday. Oh my God, I'm so super excited. That is our Friday. Um, we just got back from vacation for those who took that week off. Um, I hope you guys uh, feel well rested and energized. I know that we have so many things that are happening um, from CEC campaign to uh, those NICSA signups. So I just wanted to, to tell you guys um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for just taking those initiatives and doing all the efforts. Um, I want to also introduce my next colleague, Diana Miller. Um, she may not be on the line, but she's a, um, uh, also a parent empowerment liaison. You guys know her. And we also have Chanel on the line in the chat. She is our project office manager. So she's the face of A's. There she is. Hey, Chanel. And she's- Hi, good morning, here. everyone. Thank you, Derry. You're welcome. And, you know, we are, you know, we're going to be interacting with you all through the chat because we're learning together. I mean, I love the, the Fridays because we're learning and we're growing and we're just learning from each other. So I'm super excited that DIT and Laura and Christina, Lisa and Latiqua provided these opportunities for us so that we can engage with our families. And I'm always excited to hear what you guys are doing to really foster um, community engagement in a virtual um, setting. Um, so with that, I just want to announce a couple of exciting things that we're doing at FACE. Um, our Watch Party Wednesday continues on March the 10th. Um, we will have our colleague, Laura Joseph, from the Office, office of School Health, and she's going to talk about advancing equity. So guys, please, please, please make sure that you share this invite with PCs, with school community. Hey, invite um, anyone you think that it would really benefit from this conversation. We also have some focus groups that are happening in March. So we want to get re-energized. We want to re-image, you know, family engagement in 2020, 2021, 2022 school year. So we need your help. We know that you guys are the experts. You're with the families. You hear from the families. And we want to provide a focus group opportunities for two sessions. There's a Summer in the City Engagement Toolkit that some in the city team will be putting together face with support as well. And then we're going to create another exciting, exciting, sort of like an initiative or some tools that is gonna be called Pathway to Parent and Home Partnership. So it's on our onboarding tool as central that you guys can utilize at, at the school level, at the district level, at the borough level to onboard new families. So. What I want to do really quickly on the chat, I want you guys to share with me your experience when you first started our job. What was your onboarding experience? What was your thoughts? I want to hear this. I love to hear when you were when you started a job, what was the onboarding experience? Let's take a quick look. I'm gonna let you guys think about it for a few seconds. And then once I see stuff. I see you guys populating um, information. I'm just going to start reading some of your onboarding experience, whether it was a job, at a school, at college, at your college, anywhere where you were onboarded. What was that experience like? Oh, worried if I would, if I would be great at it. Oh, my God. A hot mess. <laughs> what else? Onboarding. When you hear onboarding, even if the word onboarding, what do you guys think about that? It was scary. That's right. Okay. What else? What was the pathway to onboarding? It was scary. Orientation to the spaces, people, policies, and 
procedure, my girl Lori. Yes. Love it. I'm still trying to navigate things for four years later. So the vision wasn't clear, right? Also, fearful, confused, excited about the opportunity. Oh, I love it. I was excited and scared because it was my dream job and I didn't know I had what it takes to succeed. Oh, I, I feel you. I was, I felt the same way. So all these experiences and all these feelings, when we think about partnerships between home and school, think about when our, we have you parents in our systems and all those feelings that you guys are feeling is some of the things that our families are feel. They have a vision, they have a goal. They have a goal in mind. They're thinking about their, how their child is going to be successful. Some of our newly families, it's the first time that their child is, is entering a school building. So that I remember when I was a PC, I loved the first day of school because you just see the parents dropping off the children and they're crying. And as the children are getting older, you see less and less. It was so funny, but that was my experience. But definitely we want to create an onboarding experience for, for parents and we need your help. So there are some dates, if you guys can, we're going to, to, to start announcing. I just wanna, you guys, this is fresh off the press. Fresh off the press. So if you hear on a Friday, this is the first time we're announcing this right here at this platform that are March 4th, 11, 18, and the 25th. Uh, we're gonna have opportunities to do a focus group, but we will have, you know, again, reiterating these, these, uh, these ideas and then hearing your feedback. So we we'll love it, we we'll love it. Every district, every FLC, every parent coordinator, if you can join, we will love your idea, your input as we're trying to, as we're, as we are developing in partnership with different offices, this amazing toolkit, both somewhere in the city and a pathway to parent and home partnership. Are you guys excited? Please put on the chat. I want to, I want to feel, I want to feel what you're feeling right now. <laughs> so in the chat, let me know how you're feeling about these two opportunities, these two focus groups. Um, I really appreciate you guys. And I really, and, and I'm always saying this, that we are such a large community. I mean, in New York City alone, we have over 600 parent coordinators, over, actually, I want to say mm, a little over 1,700 family liaisons sta on staff. So imagine all of us kind of creating and brainstorming and also putting all these amazing resources together for our families. My, I always think about no child left behind, no one left behind, or oh, the movie. There's a movie, I forgot the name of the movie, but it's with, it, 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 it's, 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 um, the scene is, is someone in the, in the war zone, and it's like, we gotta go back because we left someone behind, no one left behind. So that's the goal, right? We want every family to feel engaged as partners, as true partners in our systems. So thank you so much. I'm going to turn it back over to my girl, Lori, uh, so that she can let us know what's going on. Laura. <laughs> no worries. I'm with you, man. Don't I'm worry. To <laughs> <laughs> kick us off to the, next, to, for the next opportunity. Thank you so much, guys. Again, I feel the energy. It's Friday. Let's get, let's get going. Let's get going. All right. So um, Tali is unfortunately unable to join us today because she's got some childcare issues. However, her and I coordinated and I'm going to just quickly cover a couple of slides um, with some information from Wide Open School. Uh, but before I get into that, do want to remind you that we are uh, still continuing to do our PDs for digital citizenship. And the next one that we're doing, because we've, we've been doing these uh, ever since about mid-January, um, and we've been focusing on teachers. But next week's session is specifically focusing on family engagement, and we told folks to invite their parent coordinators. So we figured we'd plug it here as well. We'd love to have you, if you can, uh, come and join us Thursday, March 4th, 1130, so that's next week on Thursday. Um, and 
basically what we wanted to do in this PD is show you how you can be uh, taking uh, this information and delivering it to your family. So kind of talking through what a potential workshop might look like, just share all the different resources that are available on Common Sense uh, so that families are supported doing this work. Because that's the thing, when it comes to digital citizenship, the compliance checklist says that we have to teach our students, but we also know that for so many families, they need the support too right? They don't understand what their kids are doing online. They don't really understand the tools being used. Uh, and, and they just want to be able to support their kids while they're at home using technology, whether it's using technology for school or using technology on their own. So definitely, if you can make it, please, please, please join us. Um, we'll pop this link into the chat in just a moment. Uh, but uh, this is something you have to register for through UpLearning, but again, we'll, we'll pop this link into the chat, uh, and I'd love to have all of you join us um, because I think this information is absolutely so timely and so needed for so many of our families. All right, but as promised, let's get into a few resources from Wide Open School. Uh, want to highlight resources for National Reading Month. Uh, so you've got some... Uh, uh, resources here. And let me actually open this up so you can see. So uh, you can go to the reading and writing section. And then again, you know, depending on the grade level, you can look for particular uh, uh, grade bands. So they've got the preschool stuff. But you know, if you're at the high school level, um, some really great resources. Um, uh, ooh, a native son. That's such a good good novel. Um, either way, again, uh, want to let you know that the resources that are uh, available on Wide Open School are just, they're vetted, they're amazing. You don't have to worry about like if they're safe or not safe. Um, and they're putting out such timely stuff. So that's the great thing about Wide Open School. And then just to remind you, uh, here we go. We've got resources for Women's History Month, which is coming up in March. So again, you know, I love that Wide Open School just they're very they're very timely about things, right? They're going to support whatever month, you know, whatever week we're celebrating. They've got those resources there. And remember, we don't have to just stick to that month. I'm I'm very a, a big proponent like I think you know, we have these weeks and months where like, all right, we're dedicating it to learning about this topic and this group, but let's keep the learning going all school year long, right? Because we're at the tail end, oops, we're at the tail end of Black History Month, but like, come on, we got to be doing that all year long. So know that the resources on Wide Open School are going to help you do that. But let's now get into who is here. So I'm going to launch our poll. Give me one second. You know, we, we like to know who's in the Zoom room. So one second here. All right. You should see that poll on your screen. I know we got a bunch of our fabulous PCs in here, but we also know that we have a few other folks that join us. And if you happen to be one of those few folks that say you're in the other category, let us know what you do. We always love to know who else is here. Um, and while you guys are filling that out, I have to say, because several people have been messaging me, uh, so uh, in case you live under a rock and you're not fully aware, news just broke. Our chancellor is stepping down. Um, I get the feeling that is going to be the news of the day. So chancellor stepping down. It's going to be effective March 15th. And in case you are wondering who is taking the helm, it is none other than Bronx Executive Superintendent Misha Ross Porter. So shout out to my folks in the Bronx. Maybe this is a good thing. I don't really know her that well, but I wish her all the best because we need strong leadership, especially now through our pandemic. And yes, in case you didn't know, I, I'm I'm the news person. <laughs> I'm always breaking news to the team. So yeah, Christina, Laura Gando, aka CNN. Uh huh. Or I feel like even the way that you said that in that news anchor voice, I was like, you missed the calling, girl. This is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. I'm like, wow. wow. <laughs> Thank you, folks. I, listen, I'm, I stay glued to all my devices all day long. I know exactly what's happening. And I keep it pretty poker because when I found out, I was like, oh, oh, that's shocking. Okay. <laughs> and that's why you should be a news anchor as well. <laughs> right? It, it's it's going to be my career after this. I, I'm, I'm a, unfortunately with the DOE until at least 55. I need the pension. But <laughs> second career, folks. Oh, wow. All right. 
So let me go ahead and end this poll. I see that we have a lot of our parent coordinators as per usual, but I also see we got some of our family support coordinators, our family leadership coordinators. We got a couple teachers here uh, and even a school admin. So wonderful, welcome folks. All right, and then hold on. You know, we gotta ask how you're feeling. So one second, we got another poll. We always like to know how folks are feeling. And remember, because you all wanted it, not only do we have like the none of the above, we got the all the feelings, <laughs> which I know was very popular the last time I, I launched this poll. Um, but hopefully you're feeling good. Again, I always feel like that first week back, it's a little rough. I, I really, I'm not, I'm like half kidding, but half serious when I say like, I always come back forgetting to do my job. <laughs> I'm like, what's my password? Uh, <laughs> okay, I'm logged in. What do I do? <laughs> so this week has definitely been a week of all the feelings between tired, happy, at certain moments, a little angry. <laughs> um, but hopefully all of you are feeling good about being here today and learning about Instagram. Because like, come on, if that doesn't put a smile on your face. <clears throat> oh, and thank you, Susan, for sharing that. So be on the lookout. The chancellor is going to be on Zoom at 1 p.m. I also believe that he's supposed to, according to this news story that I read, he is supposed to be joining de Blasio at 10 a.m. for a news conference. I mean, clearly that's supposed to be happening now. But if you're like, if you know de Blasio and you know what he's like, uh, that news conference ain't happening at 10. <laughs> Well, more like 1030. Uh, so. And now you've become a roaster. <laughs> <laughs> now this is like more like the podcast feel. <laughs> yes. <laughs> where, where I, you know, include a little personal aside. But yeah, de Blasio never starts on time. So, you know, if you're like me, multitask, have, have it on, you know, on, on the side. Oh, and Ernesto says he's on now. All right. So o only 20 minutes late. <laughs> All right, folks, so let me share the results with you. Apparently, we're all having all the feelings. <laughs> um, all right, and then let me show you what is on deck because we have some fabulous classes coming in the next couple of weeks. So next week, um, Tali is bringing in her colleague, Gretchen, and they're going to be going over a really deep dive of wide open school. Now, I know we mention wide open school a lot. And we give you tidbits here and there, kind of showing you some of those timely resources, but this is going to be more comprehensive. And the thing with wide open school is that the DOE has a very special partnership with wide open school. So, uh, you know, you can go to like the generic wide open school, but they signed um, a special kind of contract with the DOE. So we have like our own version with some, as I understand, exclusive content. So that's what they're going to be going over next Friday. And then the Friday after that, we heard you guys loud and clear. I, we know that a lot of you wanted um, some PD from Microsoft. So uh, our colleague Michaela from Microsoft is going to be doing a whole PD on Sway. And if you don't know what Sway is, it's kind of like a cross between PowerPoints and websites, but in the coolest possible way, I promise. Um, so those are going to be essentially our next two classes, but we need to know kind of what are you looking for uh, after March uh, 12th and beyond, right? So with that, let us launch one more poll, I promise. Um, let us know kind of what are, what are the things you need, all right? So you'll see on your screen a couple of classes, um, and, and please feel free to kind of vote for uh, whichever ones feel most pressing for you right now. And I will say this, if there's something that you need support with, um, you know, you're like, oh, I really wish I could get this type of training. You, you know what to do. Join the team. You can reach out to one of us. We are extremely responsive. That is actually how we got the Microsoft uh, Sway PD. For those of you who will remember, um, uh, uh, what is it, a few months ago, we got the Zoom uh, guy to come in. So if you tell us specifically what you need, we'll make it happen. All right. Uh, so if you see, if you don't see what you want on the screen, no worries. You can just kind of message us privately uh, and let us know. All right. 
So I'll give you folks just another few moments to complete that poll. Uh, yep. And Ronnie, I see translator. We have some translation stuff coming down the pike. I'll tell you that much. So um, thank you for letting us know. Like I said, that's actually stuff we're already working on. Uh, and I'm actually part of that um, specifically. So we'll, we'll get you the translation stuff very soon. I promise that's in the works. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and end this poll. All right. And it's now time to learn. <laughs> I really just wanted to show off that GIF. Uh, all right, folks. So we are going to be uh, learning about Instagram and I'm actually gonna just throw this link in here. In fact, I'm gonna make it, cause right now you have to kind of be on your DOE, but I'll update this with anyone with the link. All right, throw this in here. All right, so you now all should be able to have access to this presentation. And let's get underway. So, we're gonna be talking all about Instagram. So today's agenda for today's uh, session is we'll do, uh, we actually already did our introductions, but we'll do some Instagram by the numbers, kind of break down why this is even important. Cause some of you might be going, look, we already do Facebook. We do this, we do like, why do we need this other thing? So we'll kind of break down why you might want to, to utilize Instagram. We're then gonna go over some tips for success. Now, some of these tips you're gonna notice if you uh, remember our Facebook class, some of them are similar, some of them slightly different, because again, slightly different platform. So we'll talk about that. We'll then look at a few schools that are already using Instagram and kind of what you're noticing about the way in which they post and, and the things they highlight. We'll then talk about how to post and moderate uh, your own Instagram account. And then we'll end with either creating or revamping your page, depending on if you already have an Instagram. So that is what is on deck for today's session. Um, and then afterwards, remember, you're going to be able to show uh, how Instagram can help you engage and empower your family community. Remember, this is about empowerment. Uh, we're going to show you those schools that are currently using it. And remember, you're going to walk away with either being able to set up that account or revamp it if you already have one. So as promised, a couple of key numbers. So I do want to throw out there, some of you may already have a personal Instagram account. So you know firsthand uh, that it can be a tool to connect with others. Um, but Instagram really is one of the most widely used social media platforms, all right? 500 million people use Instagram uh, every single day, all right? Um, <clears throat> and at least 200 million... Instagram users visit at least one business profile daily, all right? Uh, Instagram users spend an average of 28 minutes daily on the platform. Now, not, not all at once, but, you know, when we total up the numbers, you're talking about half an hour every day spent looking at social media content on just Instagram. Instagram. And then about six out of 10 Instagram users log in daily. It is the second most used social media platform behind Facebook. So if you're wondering again, why you might want an Instagram, this is why, all right, behind Facebook, it's the most widely used. So if your school has both a Facebook and an Instagram, again, you're just kind of targeting the two most widely used social media platforms. And if you'll remember, when we talked about the reasons to use social media and when we looked at Facebook, we want to be using the platforms that our community is using, right? That's why this is so important. I know that folks shy away from the social media. They get a little nervous. They're like, oh, I don't know. I've heard horror stories. This happened, this happened. But the truth is, is that it it's a platform that our populations are using, right? We know that our students are using this. We know that our families are using this. So it is extremely important that we use the platforms that our community uses. All right. That's, that's the, the importance behind this. So let's go over a couple of tips for success. All right. Now, 
when you set your account up, you do want to use your school email, right? No personal emails. That means you got your own personal Gmail or, you know, Hotmail or AOL, whatever you got going on. None of that, right? This all should be super, super official. So use um, your school email account. And then you want to assign that point of contact. So it may be you as the parent coordinator, but maybe it's the Spock in your building, the tech teacher or coach, the library. And we know that Oftentimes with social media, the um, the admins will kind of take charge of that. So it might be the principal or the AP that's the point of contact. It doesn't really matter who it is, but it needs to be one particular person. Because if you kind of assign no one to do it and like, you know, it's like, oh, well, we, you know, there's like five of us that all have access and can go in, but no one's really leading it it essentially becomes a platform that you're not really using. So someone does kind of need to take charge of it. And then you can add moderators to help manage, right? So you can give several folks the login information, but you want someone who's really gonna like kind of take charge on maintaining that. Now, the about section is super important, but do keep in mind that it's not like the about section in say Facebook. Facebook, there's like no uh, limitations. And, and in fact, that you can kind of put a whole bunch of information in your about section. In Instagram, it's a little bit more limited uh, in terms of the space that you can put. So you wanna make sure that basically, uh, as with anything, anything in your about section, is um, accurate, right? You need to make sure that if you're adding things like your school email or address, that it's you know accurate. Um, sometimes telephone numbers change. So make sure that anything that's in your about section is uh, listed correctly. Uh, you can identify, you know, if if it's being managed by a particular person, sometimes that helps. You know, you can or can include that. Again, be mindful that sometimes space can be a little limiting in the about section. Um, I would say, if possible, do include uh, your school website. Um, Oftentimes you'll see folks kind of have a link to that. That's another helpful way that someone who's coming to your Instagram page is going to get information. And then if you have uh, any other important or pertinent school information, you can throw it in there. And of course, if you have a hashtag or some kind of motto, that's nice as well. You may have to play around with the about section because like I said, it's not like Facebook. You don't have this unlimited amount of space. You will need to kind of be selective and strategic as to what you you include. Um, now, a <laughs> couple more tips. Remember, anytime we are talking about social media, super important that we uh, remember those media consent forms. Now, uh, that is something that is going to change just a little bit, not the media consent, but we are procuring DocuSign, which I know is is really exciting for folks because we got to get away from this whole paper based business. It, this this is a, just ineffective, and you know, for so many of our families who don't have devices, listen, you don't got a device, you definitely don't got a printer, right? <laughs> so we're working with them uh, to to make this possible because once that is officially out and ready to go it'll be so much easier to get that media consent form digitally signed, all right? Uh, so kind of stay tuned, that's coming. It's not quite like ready just yet, but uh, it's coming, all right? And then do make sure that when you're posting uh, any PII, that's personally identifiable information, is not in your images or posts. And that is so important. I see this happen a lot uh, with images and it's usually inadvertent. Um, you know, you have like, I, I love the cutesy the posts on Instagram where it's like the kid with their smiling face and like their work like this. I love those types of images. Uh, maybe because that's the type of photos I took of my kids, <laughs> but uh, we have to be careful because oftentimes you'll have kids showing off their cute work and right at the top, super visible for everyone to see is their whole name. Whole names are PII. All right. So way to get around that. You can kind of use the blur feature, um, you know, Editing photos has never been easier. So <laughs> it used to feel like, oh do, boy, I have to use Photoshop. I have to cut and edit and paste and do all sorts of stuff. Nowadays, right from your phone, you can easily, you know, just black out a name, cover it up, um, you know, add an emoji. You can do all sorts of creative looking stuff uh, so that 
you can get rid of the PII. But do keep in mind, very, very important that we don't share any personally identifiable information. And if you have any questions about that, Common Sense has some information on their site about PII. You can certainly do a good, quick Google search. Um, but when in doubt, you know, I always say err on the side of caution, don't post it have another colleague look at it for you. Um, and then there are some creative things you can do if you don't have media consent. Cause I typically, I will tell you right now, I didn't want to have to deal with half of that stuff. It was just, you know, we had 800 students in my building and sometimes it was just too much of a hassle. So, you know, when I wanted to post pictures of kids, I got creative backs of heads. All right. Or emojis covering the face. Now with a lot of the mask wearing, I'd say you're probably, for the most part, okay, depending on the photo. Uh, but if you don't have the media consent, uh, do know there are a few workarounds, all right? Um, and then in terms of posting content, we, we've given you this advice before, but consider having some sort of calendar or schedule of when you're posting. That way you stay consistent. I know um, one of the schools that I was working with before told me that they essentially try and post one photo by the end of each school day. Now that might be way too much. You're going, oh my goodness, I wasn't planning on making this a daily routine. And that's fine too. You have to consider uh, what makes sense for your school. So if you have the bandwidth to do it every single day, by all means, share a post every single day. Um, but if you're like, ooh, that feels a bit much, maybe we're gonna post, you know, twice a week. You know, we're gonna we're gonna post something Monday, we're gonna post something Friday, we're gonna post something Wednesday and Friday. I mean, you understand what works for your uh, schedule. But the most important thing is to kind of have that schedule, right? And then stay consistent. So if you know you want to post every single day. Um, you know, then by all means go for it. But if you are recognizing that's too much, just kind of keep in mind that you can play around with it, but it's more important to stay consistent because then your community will know. They're like, oh, you know, the school always posts something, you know, Mondays at nine and Fridays at three, you know, something at the beginning of the week, something at the end of the week. And it gives folks something to look forward to. So that's the benefit of staying consistent. And then with posting comments, remember whenever uh, you, you post content, uh, the comments are gonna follow. So it's really nice that when you post content, you remember to also engage with your community through the comments, right? Um, and, and, you know, it's just a way to kind of keep the conversation going, but also a way to build community. People feel kind of special when they're acknowledged, right? So, you know, you might have posted a really cool photo and you've got some parents commenting. You can like that comment. You can certainly comment back to them. Um, but it's just a nice way to kind of uh, engage with your community, right? Uh, because these platforms, they're not one way, right? That's what websites are. Websites are very much a one way form of communication. But social media is two-way. Uh, so do engage your community uh, with the commenting. Uh, and then just a couple more tips. Uh, with logos, really uh, nice to be able to use your school logo, um, especially for like a profile pic. Uh, I would say when you're you know thinking of profile pictures for any social media, I tend to shy away from using any pictures that highlight particular people, especially students. Um, students, uh, you know, because then it becomes, well, you've only highlighted this group of, of, you know, three students or this group of five students in the school's profile picture, right? Um, so if you choose something like a logo or maybe the school's mascot as, uh, as, as the profile picture, that just feels a little bit more, um, you know, equal. You're not, you know, valuing one student versus another. Uh, but it's also just nice because, again, we want to incorporate our logos throughout uh, the various social media and websites that we have, right? The more you promote and use your logo, the more it's associated with your school. Um, and then when it comes to commenting, we're going to talk about this uh, in a few a few more slides, but you want to make sure that you are kind of uh, maintaining the type of guidelines uh, that you need to so that folks aren't posting comments that are, um, you know, inappropriate or that kind of violate those community norms and, um, and guidelines. So, you know, you need to kind of moderate. That's always important. Uh, social media, this is this is where it gets tricky, and this is why I know folks shy away from it. But listen, it's a fact of life, right? Um, so you always want to have that kind of um, person who's monitoring the comments. And if something's unacceptable, 
you know, you, there are things you can do and that's what we'll talk about in a few slides. All right. But uh, do make sure that you are monitoring the comments because it is just as important as the actual uh, social social media content itself. All right, so let's talk more about that comment control, all right? And I do wanna just keep in, uh, be transparent about this. Instagram really is more of a mobile platform. So uh, you can access it on the web, but I actually find that when it comes to, um, you know, moderating content and actually posting and whatnot, you get a better experience from the mobile versus going to the website. Um, it's really, it's this, Instagram is one of those that's optimized for, for mobile use. So uh, you'll see that I've got like all these screenshots showing the mobile view, all right? So in order to go to the comment control settings, once you're on the Instagram app, up at the top, you'll see these three horizontal lines. That will pull up kind of um, this like settings panel. Uh, you're going to go into your uh, settings, all right? You're going to go into privacy, then into comments. And then from here, you can decide, right, kind of what uh, comment settings you would like. So you can, if, if it makes the most sense, you can completely disable comments. I tend to say that that's not necessarily the best route to go. Um, that might be something you, you do if you're noticing you're having major problems, right? And like, you've got maybe a ton of students that, you know, have bombarded your, your page with some inappropriate stuff, but I would say, generally speaking, you want the comments on, cause again, that's where you're going to get some of that back and forth from your community. All right. Uh, so I would say you, you kind of keep the comments on, but if you have particular individuals, right, you have maybe some folks that they've proven they can't handle social media. They can't handle your Instagram. You can block comments from particular people. All right. And if you would like, you can um, set this up. And I, I actually do have this on, on my account, this hide offensive comments. Um, so I, I personally like that. And you can also choose to manually filter. And if you do that, you can hide comments that contain specific words or phrases, um, and you can set it up uh, uh, that way. But again, it's really important no matter what you choose and kind of how you choose to kind of allow and, and maybe not allow certain comments. Um, it's important that you know that this feature is there in, in Instagram and how to get to it if you ever do wanna make those changes. And if you need more support, um, I'll pop out of here for just a second. Yep. So in the notes, and I can certainly, I'll, I'll copy this and put it in the chat. Um, but this is some more information about how to filter comments out. All right. All right. So I talked about this a moment ago, um, you know, in terms of like assigning a point person, but also having some other folks who are going to help out. Um, and I think social media and really any of this stuff works best when you have a team. So consider, you know, kind of thinking about who are the folks that are gonna fulfill some of these roles. So we've identified just a few folks and, and this might not, you know, apply to your school. Maybe you're gonna divvy up roles a different way. Um, but, you know, if you're gonna have a team, you might as well assign some kind of roles and responsibilities. So you always are gonna to want to have those nurturers who are gonna be greeting new people, right? Like, you know, oh, you know, we, we got this many uh, new, new Instagram users to our page. Like we're, we wanna welcome you. Here are some of our community guidelines, right? Like that's always nice to do when you notice like, oh, wow, we've got, you know, 20 more followers than we had last week. You know, so that can be the type of thing you do where you're welcoming in those new folks who are following your account. Responders are folks who kind of urge others to comment, make sure that everyone's posts and ideas and contributions are recognized. So remember when I was saying, you know, engage with those comments, that can be someone's sole role, someone who's really going to make sure that they are commenting back to the parents and the students that comment um, and just, you know, again, engaging with those folks. So important because social media really isn't that one way, right? It's two way. So we want to make sure that we're acknowledging that two way. 
pushers are folks that deepen the dialogue with probing questions. So, you know, we'll talk more about this when we talk about like the different types of posts, but, you know, some of your posts might really be um, posts that encourage folks to really contribute with their thoughts, their questions. And so you want to make sure that if that's happening, that you've got someone who's really kind of um, pushing that process along. Sharers are, are the ones who are always finding a good outside resource to enrich a conversation, right? Those are your folks who are like, did you know this existed? I'm on this website every day. So you could be doing a lot of that with some of the resources that we've shared. Hint, hint, wide open school. <laughs> um, but this is, this is where, you know, you can share and highlight all those good things that parents and families need. And then monitors are, are folks who can alert you when there's activity that may be of concern. And, and I would kind of really uh, encourage you to think, um, to, to, to set your account up and, and encourage everyone to kind of be a monitor, right? Because like that's how social media works best when we all actively kind of agree to these set of, of um, kind of norms and, and guidelines. And so in theory, everyone should be a monitor and make sure that the content that's being posted isn't, you know, isn't violating any of those kind of guidelines that you've established. And if it is, then, you know, is there a way for that, that person to kind of let you know? Um, and, and anyone can truly be a monitor uh, because you, you want to know when things are getting posted. Hopefully that won't happen. And we're going to talk through about, you know, how you can ensure that your, your pages is, is as positive as possible, but we know it does happen. And so you want to make sure if any of that is happening, that it gets reported to you right away. Uh, and then as with everything social media, don't forget about all of those DOE guidelines. So we've posted the social media guidelines for staff um, because you can have social media. There's there's sometimes a misconception. Folks think that like uh, DOE is not allowed to have social media. That's not true. DOE can have social media, but you have to make sure you follow the guidelines, especially for your super official accounts, which if you're creating an Instagram for your school, that would be an official school account as opposed to an, a personal account. So you want to make sure you follow those guidelines. If you are getting students involved, um, typically at like the upper, upper middle school and high school, um, uh, age, then you want to review the social media guidelines for students over 13. Again, keep in mind that when it comes to Instagram, I believe that you have to be 16 and up. Facebook is actually 13. So, you know, you can have, in theory, you can have some of your upper middle school students, I think like what eighth, some of your eighth graders may be able to contribute to a Facebook page, but you want to be careful when it comes to Instagram. Uh, it's not typically a platform that, you know, we want students uh, using. So if you're getting students involved, um, it could be that, you know, they take photos, but you as, you know, the parent coordinator or um, the teacher, whoever is posting, they actually post the content. Um, so there's ways to kind of get students involved and not actually give them, you know, the complete reins, right? Uh, and I would actually argue that's the way you should do it regardless. Um, students sometimes, you know how they are, they can be a little unpredictable. They Sometimes they go rogue. <laughs> and so you don't, I, I would actually uh, not advise giving students um, the password or any of that login information, but they can certainly go around taking photos. And I actually think for Instagram, that's a really nice thing for students to be able to do, uh, for students to be able to um, take photos around the school with their friends, and that those are the photos that are featured on Instagram. And, and then you can give credit, right? You can say like, you know, uh, this student, you know, uh, Susie took this photo, you know, Johnny took this photo. So it's, 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 it's a nice way to get them involved, but just keep in mind that there are guidelines. You also do want to in, um, review the internet acceptable use policy. And also remember, there's a ton of digital citizenship uh, resources. So if you need any of those, those are all linked here. Um, and remember that next Thursday, we're going to talk uh, with Tali and myself and Jackie, who I, the three of us lead these PDs, and we'll talk more about that digital citizenship piece and how to make sure that uh, you bring that work to your families. All right, so let's get into some Instagram specific stuff because, you know, Instagram is a very different social media platform than, say, Facebook. One, it is really more optimized for mobile viewing. All right. It's, it's, you can access it from the web, but it's not uh, the same experience. At least, you know, I don't think that. 
And I am getting some background noise, so I just want to remind folks, uh, please, please, please keep your, keep your mics muted. All right. Thank you. So <clears throat> when it comes to Instagram, one, you need to know that Instagram is highly visual. All right. Um, in fact, you can, you do need to post an image in order for you to post content. So uh, you, you, you want to make sure to think through like, hmm, what's the, the image or images that I'm going to share or what's my video? Um, but either way, you need to kind of um, identify that like multimedia that you're sharing. Unlike Facebook, where you can just write a post, right? You can, it can just be all text-based. But with Instagram, it's going to require images. Um, <clears throat> and the goal is to get users to stop scrolling, that's the whole point. So if you've ever been on Instagram, you know, like you get there, you have a feed and basically anyone that you follow is going to show up in your feed along with any hashtags that you follow and some sponsored content. Cause let's face it, they're going to make money. And so there's always going to be some sponsored content that you'll, you'll encounter. All right. So just to kind of highlight a couple of things, right? So we've got the geo tag and this is again, optional, some Posts will use it. Some, you, you don't have to. It's not a requirement. But, uh, you know, you can always tag a specific location. I know that some schools will tag their, their specific school. Um, so you can certainly add that if it feels important to your post. Um, as I said before, it's, it's visual. So there's some sort of photo or video. And that's going to kind of give folks the, the weight. This looks cool. I'm going to stop scrolling. And that's the point of Instagram. You want someone to stop scrolling, right? Because if you have Instagram yourself, you know, sometimes you just scroll, 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 and you're not even, you're not even looking. You're just like, eh, whatever, boring, boring, boring. But then you see something cool and you're like, oh, wait. So that's the goal. You want make, you want to make the, your, your viewers stop and take a look. With that, you then want to add in the caption. Oop. Hit the mouse one second here, folks. Ugh. Here we go. Um, so you want to give folks some information, right? So that's the caption where you're providing more context. Um, and then within the caption, right, you want to include the hashtag. And the hashtag is what's going to allow your post to become more searchable and therefore reach an even wider audience. And we'll talk more about hashtags in a few slides, but remember that hashtag is something that you can develop. And so if you have a specific hashtag that you're using for your school, you want to make sure that within your caption, you put that hashtag in there. Um, and then once your post goes live, you're going to want to kind of look at those comments and likes, right? This is where folks are going to like love what you're doing. They're going to either hit the, the heart button. They're going to comment. They may even kind of repost you, right? They may add this to their own. Um, uh, you can take a post and add it to your stories. You can kind of um, send it to others. So that's what this little symbol is. But basically, this is uh, an Instagram post. Now, this is an actual post. We're going to talk about some of the other ways to post content on Instagram because Instagram has evolved. And so now there's stories and there's even reels. So we'll talk about those in just a moment. But this is, uh, for those of you who are new to Instagram, this is kind of where you want to start. You want to start with just your basic posts. And these will always be within your your account. Now, what do you post, right? <laughs> uh, again, keep in mind that it's super visual. So you always want to have some sort of image connected to your posts, but you can kind of, when it comes to the content itself, you can go in a lot of different directions. Uh, I tend to love posts that celebrate students, staff, and families. So anything amazing happening within your building is Instagram worthy, right? So if you're putting on an art show, if you're, you know, um, doing any type of celebration, maybe, uh, you know, you did some cool thing for respect for all week, uh, or, you know, you, it's, uh, you're doing a movie night, you're doing fun stuff, put that in there. All right. That's the kind of stuff that your school community loves to see and your school community will eat it right up. The other thing you can post are things like events. Again, keep in mind that this is all about uh, connecting with your family community. So I know that a lot of events get posted, say on your school website, 
But going back to that, you know, how many people actually look at your school website every single day? They may not, but we know that most folks log into social media every single day. So if you've got some event and you're promoting it on your website, promote it on all of your social media, including your Instagram. Any school news, tech tips, right? Things like that. Questions that you want members to answer. Uh, you maybe, you know, surveys, we always do those school surveys, I think around this time, right? I'm not quite sure if we're still doing those, but you know, anything where you want uh, your family community to know about that's Instagram worthy. All right. It's, it's relevant. All right. Uh, you can also, we've linked it more on how to construct some engaging Instagram posts, uh, but they really all boil down to it's, it, it has to do with the image. It has to do with what you're sharing. Is it eye catching? Um, so that is, that is the name of the game when it comes to Instagram. That is how you get folks to stop scrolling. So, uh, whenever you're going to share something, think about what's the most like eye popping image or video that you can add right, uh, to your account. So, you know, you might not be sharing the most exciting news, but maybe if you've got a super exciting image to go with it, that's going to get folks to stop scrolling and take a peek. Um, so I want us to actually practice this because I feel like, you know, this is, this is where like writing posts can get a little tricky. So I'm going to quickly open us up into breakout rooms. And all I want you to do is think about a post that you're going to write now, with Instagram, unlike say Twitter, Twitter has a character limit, Instagram doesn't. But <clears throat> keep in mind that some of the super, super, super lengthy stuff, that'll also uh, get folks to kind of scroll past because it's like, oh my gosh, they put a book in here. I'm not reading all that. So keep in mind when you're you're writing your posts, things that are short and to the point um, along with an eye-catching image are going to work well for you. All right. So when I send you into your breakout rooms, I want you to think about what's the post you're going to write. What image or video might you post? Um, is this something where you're sharing a resource? Are you doing some sort of uh, highlight celebration? And then don't forget your hashtag. And then feel free when we come back into the main room to share your post um, and, and get feedback, right? So uh, I'm literally going to give us five minutes. And again, the reason being is I want you to focus on kind of creating something super short and succinct. Again, try and avoid those lengthy books because that's where we get into like, folks are not going to read all that, right? So let me open us up into breakout rooms. One second here. All right. So essentially there's going to be about six folks in a room. All right. Um, and use this as a time to just kind of talk and create um, low stakes, low pressure. And you don't have to have this ready to go like you're about to post it. This is just to help you get thinking through it um, just so that you can practice here before you actually have to create one. So you should see the prompt to go to a room. I suggest you go. If you need help, you can always uh, ping me, but please, 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 uh, you should now see that prompt to go to your room.
And for those who have stayed in, um, in this main room, you're also welcome to practice writing a post. You can put it in the chat up to you. I just wanted to give folks time, like I said, to practice. Um, sometimes it just takes a little bit of that practice to get good. I have a question on a posting. Sure. So um, I have like nine parents who just graduated from the Cornell workshop, seven week training. Mm -hmm. um, is it okay to post their certificates or do you advise not to do that with their pictures? You can post certificates. I mean, I would just kind of, um, if you can blur out their, because typically a certificate I think would have like a full name. Correct, um, it will. So just like, if you want, you can blur out like the last name because first names are fine. I don't want to, maybe I should have clarified. Um, the whole name is, is, is considered PII, but if you, you know, want to just kind of take out the last part of it or black out the whole name, that's fine too. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think that's really nice. And to highlight that, you know, folks in your community are getting awards. That's lovely. Okay. Um, in the Instagram, uh, it allows you to blur the last name. So what I would do is, um, if you're, I'm assuming you're on your phone, you can actually edit. I mean, I have an iPhone, but I know like if I go into the edit feature, mm -hmm. I can, um, like I can on a picture, if I, if I hit edit, I can use my blur tool. Um, I think it's on an iPhone. It's called, uh, I use something called markup and markup gives you the ability to like blur out or um, with a pen kind of like, you know, scribble over the name. So that's what I would do. You can also, I think um, I've done it before where you can add a shape. And if you want to like black out a name, you just make a rectangle and kind of make it cover the name. Right, right. But I've seen that a lot. Did you say markup yeah. or marker? Mark up. Okay, got it. Uh, I'm writing it down. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. No problem. So, <clears throat> um, yeah, the uh, it's easier to to edit the photo in the actual like camera or I should say the photo app itself mm -hmm. than to edit, I think, in Instagram. When you're editing an Instagram, what'll happen is you can certainly apply like filters and stuff, but it's I find it's easier to edit the actual photo on like the photo app in your phone. Oh, okay. Sounds good. Thank you. No problem. That's actually a great question. I'm going to bring that up to everyone when we all get back in here. So welcome back to the folks who are in here. We are just coming back from our breakout rooms. Hopefully you got a chance to craft a really great post. Uh, looks like another two seconds and everyone should hopefully be back in here. All right. And I think we're all back. So welcome back. So if anyone feels super brave, you are welcome to post, uh, you know, a version of the post that you kind of were creating in your breakout room. Um, I want to highlight something that was brought up in our main room. Someone asked a great question about like, how do I edit photos? Should I edit in Instagram? 
And I actually said it's easier typically to edit photos within your actual uh, camera or uh, photo app itself on your phone. Um, so it, the example of like, how do I blur out a name, right? How do I do that? So I have an iPhone, but I'm pretty sure it works similarly on an Android. You can either um, <clears throat> in an iPhone, when you go to edit, you can choose to do something called mark up. So you can like cross out a name with like the pen. You can also add a shape. And if you're going to use a shape, use a rectangle, make it skinny, cover up the name, make that rectangle black. Um, that's how you kind of get around, like, you know, getting names off or blurring things out. The other thing to do as well is you can add an emoji. Um, and, you know, like I said, that's really good for when you've got pictures of faces, particularly kids, and, you know, you don't have a consent form, throw an emoji over their face, works fabulously. Um, <laughs> With adults, you don't necessarily need that. So adults, just keep in mind, like if you're highlighting maybe some parents who helped uh, in your in your building, you don't actually need media consent for uh, your parents. If, if they're, I believe it's if they're over 18, I, I might have to double check that, but you don't need media consent form from parents. But I would always just, you know, if I'm gonna do that, like I would tell the parents like, hey, you know, I'm going to, I mean, I want to post your photo. Is it okay? Like, that's just like common courtesy. Cause I think we've all been there where that relative of ours, right. <laughs> they, they post that picture of us and we're like, oh my God, that is like not my good side. I did not know that photo was going up. Right. We've, I think we've all been there. So that's why it's just common courtesy. Whenever you're going to post, even of like your own staff, right? Like tell some teachers like, Hey, we got a great photo of the staff. We're going to post you guys. And we're going to put you on our Instagram. You know, it's just good practice. Uh, Oh, and I see Anna saying, I'm going to edit on my Mac. Listen, there's a lot of ways to do this. I don't want you to think there's one right way, whatever feels comfortable for you. And this is one of those situations too, where if you're like, I'm not maybe so good with the editing, I don't really know how to work my phone. You know, I, I, listen, we get that. That's why this work is great when you assemble a team, because maybe you're not so great with the photo, but someone on your team is, all right? And that that person can be doing, right, the, the editing. So, May I ask another question before I leave? Sure. Yes, please. So um, I help out with the registration. So what I usually do so that later on it doesn't become a problem, I have the uh, photo, video uh, posting. So when a parent comes and register, I also say, oh, by the way, we also love to post mm -hmm. uh, pictures of the students and of you on Twitter, District 7 website. Can, would you, if it's okay with you, can you sign this if you approve? So that way later on, we don't have to run after the parent and sign the approval of video or pictures and so forth. That's a great tip. I mean, a lot of schools do it that way though. I know at the beginning of the year, the school I used to work in, we used to have like a little welcome back packet. And one of the, the uh, items in the welcome back packet was the photo release. Um, so if you can kind of catch folks when they're registering, make them fill it out, then you have it right. And you can kind of file it away and having some sort of system to keep track of like, all right, who signed it versus who didn't. Cause that's, I think that's where it's just important. Um, I know a lot of schools get the photo release, but then it's important to know like, wait, whose do we actually have? Cause there's always going to be a handful of parents that don't give you the release, right? And those are actually the kids you need to be very well aware of because the minute you post their photo, you know it's going to be a problem. So <laughs> just keep that in mind. I, I think that's a great system, Anna. So definitely try and get it, you know, when they're either in registration or at the beginning of the year, but have some sort of like either a spreadsheet, just some system that lets you know, because no one wants to have to go to like that binder or wherever you keep those forms and have to manually dig, wait, do we have Susie Q's consent form, right? Do we have Billy and Johnny's consent form? That's not going to help you. <laughs> All right. So I do want to just highlight um, in case you want to see some, some examples at the school level. So this is PS 133 in Brooklyn. Uh, so as you can see, here's that, that about section. And this is what I meant when I said it's really tight, like you don't have a lot of space. So, um, you know, they've got their logo, as you can see, couple, uh, uh, their hashtag, their school, and then, you know, you can choose to follow them. Right. Uh, so just wanted to show just a couple of the posts they have. And if you're interested in looking at their accounts, all of them are actually linked. So if you click on, um, where it's underlined, it'll take you 
uh, like I said, you can view Instagram from a website. I tend to say it doesn't have the same feeling, but there, there they are on Insta. Um, and as you can see, I mean, look, here is, uh, an, um, a call to action, right? The PTA needs you, right? So get involved. Uh, here is, you know, just kind of highlighting uh, the fact that it was welcome back to, to school. They were um, inviting their pre-K students back into the building. This was back in the fall, as you remember, when we kind of were, you know, gradually getting folks back in. And then look, even some like device support, right? So, you know, Insta there's really no rules as to what you can and can't post. Like it, Instagram is, is highly visual. So as long as you've got a visual and you can see these are three very different visuals. This one is more of like an ad a la Canva type of thing. But you can see here's an image highlighting, you know, some of the school teachers and leaders within the building. And here's something on iPads, which, you know, iPads we know are a hot topic uh, when it comes to... Uh, this school year. So, you know, if you've got any type of divorce, uh, device support that you're offering, you know, that'll, that'll always get a lot of traction because, you know, those darn iPads, they just need a whole lot of help. All right. And then this is IS 34 um, out, I believe in Staten Island. Yep. Here we go. Staten Island. So again, really quick in the info section. And I'm just highlighting this because this is slightly different than Facebook. If you're used to Facebook, Facebook, you can kind of throw the kitchen sink in there in your about us section, but in Instagram, it's a lot tighter. So, you know, um, you can just kind of have some space for your school name, any of the hashtags that you're using. This school is using two different hashtags. Um, they have their address and their school website. So, you know, this is what I mean when I said, like, it's got to be super tight. Um, you don't have a lot of space. And then, as you can see, again, they're, they're, these two posts highlighting, you know, kids going back, right? Always, always fun. And we know that middle school just came back this week. So if you are, you know, um, at a middle school and your students just came back, these are the type of posts you want to share this week, right? Like smiling middle schoolers who are excited to finally be back in the building. <clears throat> and then here, you know, again, promoting any type of event. So you've got this Zoom happening, right? Uh, a parent info session. So if that's something that your school is doing, remembering to promote it in all your various platforms, right? If you've got social media, obviously there, um, your school website, blast an email out, right? <laughs> Send a carrier pigeon. I mean, the point is if you're doing any type of workshop or outreach to your parents and your family community, post it everywhere. And then this is Queens Technical High School. <clears throat> so as you can see, really simple again in the about, but look at this cool stuff. I mean, I live for like student artwork. So I love stuff that like, again, highlights that student artwork. <clears throat> and then again, because they're a high school, so I thought this was cool. Uh, recommendations on what to do right after high school. So kind of a cool post for them. Um, and this is this is where you know I'm sure there's there's going to be comments, right? Sometimes you know some posts are going to generate more comments than others, and this might be one where you're really engaging with your community on social media, right? You're posting questions and trying to get others to kind of answer and engage with you. So this might be um, one of those posts that garners a lot of comments and you're gonna want someone really moderating and making sure that anyone who comments, um, you know, is acknowledged and any questions that uh, arise get, get answered. All right, so I keep saying this, but really remember that when it comes to Instagram, pictures and video drive the content, all right? Now, when it comes to posting images, you can include up to 10 images in one post. Uh, so what that means, and I'll actually go back. So you can see here with this one, recommendations on what to do right after high school. It even says swipe to hear from our partners. So in this particular post, I can tell that there's actually five total images because these little dots on right underneath the image tell me that there's, there's more. So if I swipe, I'm gonna get the next image. So in Instagram, 
in one particular post, you can have 10 images. Or if you choose to post a video, you can post a one minute video and then there's no images. So you can't really combine the two. Um, if you're going to post pictures, you're posting pictures. If you're going to post a video, you're posting a video. Now the video can be one minute. Uh, if you have, I believe it's over a thousand followers, I believe you're allowed to post uh, slightly longer content. Uh, but I would say if you're just starting out, usually one minute videos are actually all people have bandwidth for. Um, so this is a great chance for you to post like some funny stuff or even like a really quick tutorial. Um, I saw when I was looking through different school accounts, like really quick videos on like, here's how you connect the keyboard to your iPad, right? Cause like that became an issue. So quick videos are great for this platform. Again, you want to make your content engaging and fun. So use filters, use stickers, emojis, and gifts in your content, that stuff. That's what social media was made for. So don't feel like you can't do that. Have fun with it. That's what makes posts memorable. All right. Um, and Alejandra, I'm just checking out your comment. That's probably what it is. Instagram, if you don't have, um, I believe it's a thousand. If you don't have a thousand followers, you're not going to be able to post uh, content longer than a minute. Um, it might actually even be 10,000. I have to double check that. But either way, it is driven by the number of followers you have. So if you don't have enough, trying to post a longer video is not going to work. Um, and then the other thing to keep in mind is Instagram stories. So we're going to talk about stories and reels in just a moment. But Instagram stories are extremely popular and can also help provide another daily snapshot of school life. Um, and I actually, I really love the stories. I, I have to admit when I, when stories first came to Instagram, I was like, oh, this is like silly, whatever. And now I think I actually watch the stories more than anything else. So keep that in mind. So speaking of stories, right? Stories are slightly different. So posts that you uh, put on your page live there forever until you kind of take it off. Stories are live for 24 hours and then disappear. So stories are a little bit more fleeting, um, but they tend to be really popular and you can add a lot of cool editing features like the stickers, the location tags. They've got a ton of fun filters. So the stories are even, dare I say, more fun than like a regular post. And then if you do want the stories to live beyond 24 hours, they can be saved and featured in your highlights. Um, and then you can actually create different categories to highlight. So I'm actually going to pop out of here because, um, again, going back to PS 133's uh, site, these are highlights. So um, this is where you would access their stories. And as long as this little ring is around their profile picture, that means that the they have a story available to view. And if you click on it, it'll take you to the stories. Of course, I'm not logged in, so I can't see it. But that's, um, that's where you would access the stories. And then, like I said, if you want them to live beyond 24 hours, it's just a quick setting. Um, you know, you can, uh, when you post it, you can save it to your highlights. And then you can have different categories. So as you see here, they have a category for events, our school, the readathon, news, tech help, right? So if you're posting those like quick videos on, you know, how to, how to connect the keyboard to the iPad, right? Or how to set up your Nixa account, you can then actually save it in the highlights and you can have categories. So I, I really, for, for that reason, I think stories are also really cool because sometimes if you, if you end up having a lot of posts, I mean, this school has 636 posts, stuff gets buried, right? Now you're having to scroll forever, forever, and forever. Um, and so it's helpful if, uh, if you're using that stories feature, use the highlights to kind of save stuff. All right. <clears throat> and then just keep in mind that, you know, if you're not ready for stories just yet, that's fine. But once you kind of get your Insta up and running, those stories are extremely popular and more than 500 million Instagram users use stories daily. So again, for that, like I pop in content, check out the stories. And then if you want more, we've included this guide to using stories to learn how to use stories even more effectively. Because again, um, this is a feature of Instagram that kind of took off and people love it. And if you want to get super fancy, all right, super, super fancy, uh, Instagram Reels. 
So Instagram Reels is a, a slightly different take on things. It's a fun and creative way to uh, create videos. So users can record and edit a 15 to 30 second video um, clip set to music and share them to their stories, their explore feed, um, and the new Reels tab on a user's profile. You've probably seen some examples of reels and maybe not even realized it, but this is actually really, really cool. Um, they did this one, uh, like this pass the ball thing, and it was actually a cool thing to kind of do because then it looked like kids were passing the ball to each other. So you'd have someone like drop the ball and then it goes to the next user, someone pass it this way, and then it goes to the next user. It's all in the way the video is edited. Honestly, that's all it is, but it's really, really cool. And if you're looking for some examples, we've done like a, you can check out like a day in the life before and after the before and after ones are really uh, fun. And you've probably seen those where, you, you know, some celebrities like in their PJs, whatever, and then they like snap a finger or do something. And all of a sudden they're in like their, you know, best dress uh, type of uh, outfit. That's like a before and after. Uh, but reels definitely um, a little bit trickier. So if you're new to Instagram, ignore the reels because <laughs> you'll just get frustrated. This does, this does take a little time and practice and patience. As my colleague Latiqua told me, not for the faint of heart. Uh, it takes, it takes a little bit more. So get good with the other stuff. And then once you're really good with it, I say go for the reels. All right. Um, and then we've included a couple of more ideas for Instagram reels, things like, uh, you know, again, encouraging students to create them, uh, that pass the ball one was, uh, really popular for quite some time. The school staff can create an Instagram reel, which I thought was really cool. Like a meet the team reel and even families, right? Get them in on the fun. So have them either submit ideas, let them know. Remember some of your families out there are super social media savvy. So take advantage of that. That and get your family community involved. This is another way to empower folks, right? To be part of, of, of um, your community. And, and this is the type of stuff that, that social media was made for. You want folks participating um, uh, uh, in, in these types of things. So uh, we've included, again, another uh, resource for you to check out. It's a blog, not specific for school, but if you're looking to kind of garner ideas um, and see what is trending out there, check that out. Um, and just like with the other social media platforms, yes, hashtags, kind of a big deal. All right. So remember your hashtags are going to help your users uh, follow you and the content that you're posting. Hashtags should be used consistently on all your social media accounts. And as you notice, the schools I highlighted, they are using some very specific, specific hashtags. And then do keep in mind when you're posting, you are actually limited to 30 hashtags per post. However, be selective. Uh, you don't need 30 hashtags. All right. One, two, possibly even three will we'll get you um, kind of, uh, you know, uh, out there and searchable, but you don't need 30. Th th those are for like your Instagram influencers who are trying to like, you know, get like their next modeling contract off of Instagram. You don't need the 30 hashtags. All right. Uh, but do keep in mind research, research, research. I can't say it enough. Um, you know, sometimes hashtags have been used by others already. So it might sound like a good idea, but then you research and you're like, whoa, there's a lot of questionable content, content with that hashtag. So always do your research, but you want to keep it memorable, unique, something that does make sense. Short and simple is always really key. You know, super, super long hashtag will just end up looking like gibberish, even if you're using camel case. So if you can make it simple, um, even better, um, obviously relevant. Consistent means that you're using it across all your social media platforms. So remember in Facebook, you can also use hashtag and Twitter, very hashtag driven. So keep that hashtag consistent across your different multi, um, across your different social media platforms. Camel case, again, capitalizing the first letter in each word makes it a little easier to use. And if you've developed that hashtag, use it everywhere. Throw it in your email signature. Why not? Keep it going. All right. Um, and then don't forget to moderate. Super important for any social media that you run. Um, so make sure that you have that team and that you're just 
monitoring the page because sometimes we create these things, we get really excited about it in the beginning. And then, you know, a month later, we're kind of like not really giving it the kind of attention it deserves. And that's when things can happen. So you want to make sure that you're actively moderating at all times so that you're supporting new members, you're building culture, you're having those conversations, right? You're celebrating, you're amplifying that community voice, and you're using social media to do what social media does best, connect your community. So with that, I, I know we're slightly over time. It is uh, 1121. But if you already have an account, I'd love for you to spend a few moments just kind of looking at it, right? Think about, are there things I want to revamp and update? Maybe you're realizing, hey, you know what? We got students featured in our profile image. Maybe let's throw in our logo or mascot. Um, double check that all your contact information is correct. I know some schools have really... Um, uh, veered away from using a phone because no one's there to man the phone, right? So maybe you want to uh, have a dedicated email address in that about section so that families can reach out to uh, the right person. Um, add some images. Maybe you're realizing, ooh, we don't have enough or we're not really varying. It all looks the same. Think about what news and highlights you might be sharing. Um, get the feeling this whole chancellor business might be something you're sharing. I don't know. Depends. That's for your school to decide. And then start brainstorming how you might plan to share your newly rebranded Instagram account. All right. All right. So if you don't have an Instagram account, I love for you to create one. It's actually not that hard. Um, Again, I would encourage you to do this from a mobile device. It really is a whole lot easier. So you can download either from the Apple App Store or Google's Play Store, download the app. You're then going to open it, enter in a username. Uh, your username should be something along the lines of like your school uh, name. So, you know, PS123 or, um, you know, PS123 Staten Island. I mean, like, you know, you decide what your username should be, but something along the lines of your, your school name um, would be helpful. Then you can add your school's email account to receive the verification code. So this does need to be um, an official account, but it needs to be an email that you can actually access because they will send you a verification code. Um, and uh, Anis, you've asked about uh, receiving the slides. You already have access to them. Uh, you can type in digin.nyc forward slash Instagram into your browser. This is that uh, shortened URL down here at the bottom. Or you can open up your phone, scan the QR code, and you will have access to these slides. Uh, once you enter in that verification code, right, um, you can then decide to either skip these next few steps or you can um, do them. It really is up to you. These are optional. So you can, as you can see here, you can skip, skip, skip. If you're just like, nope, we're not finding Facebook friends. No, I don't want to add my contacts. But again, I would highly recommend adding that profile picture, right? So that school logo or, um, you know, your mascot. And then you can decide if you want it to remember your login on that device or not. All right. So once you've done all of that, guess what? You now have an Instagram account. So that means you're going to update your bio. Remember all that stuff to include. Share your first post, right? Um, share your account with your families and then start building that social media empire, right? Um, now, when it comes to followers, this type of stuff takes time. So don't think like, all right, we made it. Now, you know, everyone's going to join. It takes some effort. So make sure that you are kind of promoting your new page everywhere you go. Tell folks, hey, we're on Instagram, right? Um, you can even, if you're, again, savvy enough and, and, and you know how to do it, create a QR code where when folks scan your QR code, it takes them right to your Instagram account, all right? That's a really nice thing to do. Then you can stick that QR code all around your school building. I know a lot of schools have like a sign, um, some sort of bulletin or signage out front that you can add like announcements to print out a really large QR code and tell your parents, hey, scan this and follow us on Insta, right? A lot of them know how to do that and they will absolutely uh, do it, but you got to tell them, right? So you're not just going to join Instagram and all of a sudden get everyone to follow you. It does take a little bit of effort and time, but I promise you, you know, if you make it and you tell the parents, they'll they'll actually do it. And, and when it comes to social media, we know that so many of our families and our parents and even some of our students have this. So if you tell them, they'll join. 
It, I, I don't usually have to twist a lot of arms. Um, and then a couple of tips to drum up some excitement and engagement. Remember, invite people to follow you. That's kind of that promotion piece. Create that QR code. If you have a schedule for posting content, um, that's going to help you. I talked about that before. Gets people excited like, oh, Friday afternoon, there's always, you know, some new photos or Monday morning, there's always new content Wednesday, there's always some new stuff. So if you kind of get into a groove and a schedule, that's going to help folks. And then they get excited to view it. Don't forget to reply to comments and messages, tag people if appropriate, and include that Instagram handle in everything, right? Be shameless about self-promotion. So I know that we're kind of at time, but a couple of next steps. Remember, you're going to work on that Instagram account, right? You're going to come to another one of our PD sessions. We do these every Friday, but our team also has PD um, pretty much every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So if you're looking for more PD, looking to learn more, check out our learning calendar at digin.myc forward slash learning cal. Share this PD and the information with a colleague. Remember, you have access to this presentation share it with your social media team at your school. Uh, maybe they didn't know some of this stuff, right? There's some helpful tips in there. And then do join our digital inclusion team and our family leadership team. And with that, I'm going to stop talking because I get the feeling there might be questions. So if you have a question, now's a good time. You can unmute yourself or you can pop it in the chat. It is up to you. I also know that Latiqua dropped the link in for attendance. So if you um, don't mind filling that out for us. And this class here, I'll open it up with you guys. Um, because this class is connecting with families using Instagram. All right. And Latigua was so on top of it. Chat? Yep. Latigua just put it in the chat. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. And thank you, Ronnie. Uh, we love that you love these trainings. So if there's any questions, comments, please feel free to drop it in the chat or you are welcome to unmute your mic and share that way up to you. Uh, it is 1128, so. Yeah, and actually, Laura, if, if, it, if, it's, if I could, um, I would love to hear um, how you guys can like share some of the information um, that we have right now going at FACE, which is the CC campaign. And the New York City Department of Education, as you guys know, we are pushing, pushing, pushing for families to get on the NICSA account. Um, we'd love to hear, is, is it possible, maybe Laura, this is a question for you as well. Um, mm -hmm. Can we do a live Instagram in our stories? You know how you do live on IG? Can we do, if we have a bunch of parents, is it possible to host a live event on Instagram? Yes, you can. Um, you, you can go live. Uh, I believe if you hold on, let me just double check when you're on Instagram in order to go live. Uh, let's see. Cause it's one of those it's in your settings here. Oh, okay. All right. So again, from the app and this all works best from the app, you open up the app, you can either go, um, let me, this works best when I take my camera uh, background off. So one second here. Take my background off. One second. Okay. So um, I'm on my Instagram. All right. And this is a personal Instagram, but I'm on my Instagram and up at the top where your profile is, it should say right underneath your story, there's a little plus symbol. You can go there. This is actually going to get you to the place where you can add a story to your account. But down here at the bottom, this is where you can change it and you can go to reels. So that's if you wanted to add a reel, but then next to reels is live. So if you wanted to go live, that is what you would do. And that means you're broadcasting live, all right? And typically when you do that, what's also going to happen is that uh, it'll notify folks that follow you like, hey, this person's now live. You've probably seen that on Instagram. Um, so uh, it's a, I think it's a cool feature, but yes, you can absolutely do that. I love, love, love it. So guys, tip. 
after this, perhaps we can do a live New York City school account. If if you have a district Instagram account, if you have a school Instagram account, please see if you guys can go live and just kind of broadcast, sign up for NIXA, um, CC forums are coming up, anything that the city and face. Um, we will love your your help because we want to make sure that every parent in New York City knows that the campaign is happening. And also, I love, love, love the, the New York City School account because it has so many valuable um, information for our families. And I think that it's just another system that probably families be like, oh, my gosh, another system I have to sign up. But it's actually a really, really good system. And I just um, encourage everyone to keep pushing the word out. Nixa is awesome. This is Nixa is great. It's a one-stop shop. Um, with that, I know we're out of time. Um, please, please, please let us know how you guys are enjoying these sessions, our Fridays. Um, we're celebrating in March, I guess, a year of being working in um, remotely. For some of us, I, I'm gonna call it blended learning, <laughs> blended engagement. Um, if you guys can drop us a um, an e like send me an email, let me know your thoughts on how are you guys liking the digital Fridays and also watch party Wednesday. I'm going to collect your stories um, and put something together just to kind of, you know, I always look for the bright spots and things that may not like you. We're in a pandemic and I always try to find the positive in things. And, I, and, I, and I've always, and we talked about this before, there's so many positives that we've seen. So share with me your story, how these Digital Fridays, um, our Watch Party Wednesday, our Tech Tuesdays, how they've been helping you in your school community to support families. We'd love to hear it. If you want to do a video, I love videos. If you want to send me an email, that's awesome. My email is drodriguez 63 at schools.nyc.gov. And with that said, we are out of time. Uh, <laughs> so thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. You guys are amazing. Have a wonderful, wonderful weekend. And we will see you at the next Digital Friday, which is all about Microsoft Suede. Uh, oh, that's that. That's actually in two oh, weeks. Oh, oh, <laughs> two oh, weeks. I'm that I'm kind of announcing it. So no, 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 don't worry. Yeah. Listen, we, we got just so much cool stuff coming. That's what it is, Derry. Absolutely. I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, so yeah, <laughs> we have, oh my God, we have such an amazing category. Um, look out also, just a heads up, guys. There, we're going to be promoting the electric um, blue car. So I'm going to pause on that because it's been, been, been cliffhanger. <laughs> um, stay tuned. It's going to be announced at the end of the week wrap up email. We're going to have a PD on the electric blue car. So then, 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 stay tuned. I love it. I, I love, I love the good cliffhanger, but yes. So folks, thank you so much for showing up. You're welcome to drop off of our live webinar for today. Keep in mind, fill out that attendance. So, you know, we are here, you'll get a follow-up email for all of you that need CTLE. The other thing too, someone asked about the recordings. We will absolutely post everything in the Microsoft team. So if you are not uh, a member of our Microsoft team, you're want, gonna want to join. Give me one second. I'm gonna get the link. All right. Yeah, and you know what? We have over a thousand members. So I'm like, wow. Oh, this that is. is the we wrong are. Way. We are just a huge community. So please, please, please continue to join. Um, invite uh, anyone who who can benefit. We're actually posting events, um, and we're reminding folks what's coming up and then even if you have like an upcoming event feel free to post um so yeah thank you so much laura and dit for providing that space for us um, we're really excited for that team channel absolutely and and like yeah. Derry said take advantage of it it's not just for us to post content to you but that is a place where you can reach out to a community of dedicated parent coordinators so please 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 join if you haven't joined already and then you know feel free to kind of use it as you see fit some people like lurk but you're, you're, you're those lurkers in social media and the teams. Listen, lurk away. It's fine. Um, that's kind of how you start learning and feeling comfortable with it. And yes, it is called the parent coordinator team. Um, and I see uh, E. Cruz. Uh, e. Cruz, do you mind telling us who you are? Because I, I know an E. Cruz. That's why I'm like, is this is this the same E. Cruz that I know? <laughs> but it is not just limited to parent coordinators. Yes, it is the piece no. team, um, but it is open to anyone that wants to join because it's really just a place where folks are getting support, advice, we're sharing information. So 
it is, it is for anyone and everyone. It is not limited to just our parent coordinators. You know, I just had, a, I just had an idea. Instead of my email, can you guys actually put, um, put a video together or just like, um, or just send us a, a blurb about how are you enjoying again your, the Digital Fridays, uh, Watch Party Wednesday, Tech Tuesday, drop it in there, the video. And what I'll do is that I'll grab the videos from the team, the, the team chat, and then I'll put something exciting together. And that's what I'm going to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks, so All right, over time, thank you again for showing up. Next week, we got Tali and her colleague Gretchen, who are going to present all about wide open school and do a much deeper dive. Because again, we've shown you snippets, but I'm telling you the whole platform is amazing. So you're going to want to show up next Friday. And then the Friday after that, it's that Microsoft sway. All right. So our next two uh, uh, weeks are scheduled, but if there's some other type of PD that you want um, and it wasn't listed in that uh, poll that we asked earlier, feel free to either drop it in the in the Microsoft team, say, hey, I need some support with this. Let us know. You're welcome to ping us separately and on the side. Um, it is totally up to you. Um, are you going to stay or are you going to leave when my friend comes out? Oh, and then I know someone in the chat asked about our session name. I just yeah. dropped it in again. This is connecting with families using Instagram. That's what we did today. Oh, it was one or two. Um, two. Okay. I love it. That sounds like a, an online teaching. Uh, right? <laughs> this, listen, this is work from home life. I totally get it. All right, folks. So I'm going to end it for us. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday and a fabulous weekend. Bye, Sharon. Next Friday. Bye, Teresa. Bye, everyone. Take care. <laughs>